just me and I thought I'd film the intro to today's video now because it's currently tipping it down with rain. I am supposed to be riding Joey here um, but we're just waiting for it to calm down a little bit. But anyway, in today's video I get to go and see a five times Paralympic gold medalist who is also a five times European champion so I went and saw the awesome Natasha Baker MBE. Great to meet you. Oh, you too. Oh, welcome to my yard. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Do you want to have a look around? Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Great, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> so these are Lottie's stables here. Oh. So I've got my tack room in there, nice. and then this is her bedroom. Oh. So these are quite Very new cool. stables that we yeah. have built quite close to the house. So we've got CCTV in there so we can keep an eye oh, on her. That's so cool. And then because she's the ultimate diva, yep. she's actually got a dressing room in there wow. as well. So that's where we tack her up. She's got a solarium in there. We keep all of her rugs and she gets groomed in there. But if it's nice and sunny, then we yep. can do it outside as well. But, but, um, but yeah, my girl's so got cool. a dressing room. <laughs> I've got one of those. <laughs> and then we've got a spare stable as well. Um, before we had her, I actually had two horses, but now I've just got Lottie. So, yeah. uh, so we've got a spare one there as well. And Ooh. then down here is actually the barn. So that's the um, original part of like the livery yard. Yeah. So all of the liveries are in here. Um, and Lottie is actually just out oh. here in the field. She thinks it's lunchtime from about 9 a.m. every day, so uh, so she'll probably come over. But Aww. yeah, she uh, it's great because we've got double-sided doors on the stable, yeah. so she can just walk out the back oh, of her so stable cool. if she wants to, or just go. And under. she's got a little friend with her as well. Who's that? She's got Pickles oh, with her. That's such a cute name. <laughs> yeah, he is adorable. We actually we have another Shetland as well called Pilgrim, um, and he was JP, my top horse's like best friend. Aww. But actually, he was too naughty and he <laughs> no. led her astray. Oh, oh. <laughs> so they had to be separated. And Pilgrim now goes out with one of the livery horses oh. to keep him company. Yeah. And Pickles is much better behaved for Lottie. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's really cute. They're like brother and sister. They oh. absolutely adore each other. That's so cute. Um, that sounds like Joey and Mickey. They just get along so well. Like whenever I look out in the field, they're always next to each other, like, never apart. Trying to eat the same blade of grass. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So true. <laughs> no, it's so so nice that she has a little friend and uh, she loves being out there with him but yeah. he doesn't come to any of the competitions or anything like yeah. that it's just just a field buddy yeah. but so yeah they're very much in love oh that's so <laughs> lovely so this is the main barn and this is where all the liveries are so my dad actually um helped build these stables so as well cool. so he's got a real connection with uh, with being in here and we originally only had this side built ah. um, and then decided to add a few stables on the yep. other side um, but Pilgrim the miniature pony he was here before the barn was built oh, so cool. he actually has his very own oh, purpose-built stable goodness. this is the <laughs> most adorable thing ever it's just so for small. him <laughs> okay I we need can... one of these <laughs> He can only just see over Rip. the door, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he was he was the OG of the barn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm later. Yeah, he is he's super cute, like mega attitude. Yeah. He thinks oh, he's the biggest yes. horse on the yard. <laughs> it's always the small ones, they have so much attitude. Yeah. My Mickey is the exact same, he's the smallest, but no, he thinks he's the biggest. <laughs> Little man syndrome. Yes, definitely. <laughs> We did actually have my competition horses in here as well. Um, but as we got more liveries yeah. and as my career kind of took off, we were a little bit worried about cross-contamination yes. and everything. And so that's why we got those still stables built out there. Ah. Okay. Just so yeah. that everything of mine can be separate. The liveries are in here, they have their own space yeah. and my horses are over there. Their feeds are separate and yeah. so no cross-contamination. Cool. So that works <laughs> yes. really well. Good plan. <laughs> yes, definitely. So Esme, would you like to meet Daphne? Yes, who's that? She is our horse box. Oh wow, is that her there? That is. Oh my goodness. She's, she's, she's beautiful. She's a bit of a beast. <laughs> I am a very, very lucky girl. So she only came home just a few days ago. Um, but yeah, she's, uh, she's pretty spectacular. Oh, cool. Do you want to come inside? Yes, please. <laughs> I'll give you the tour.
Oh, wow. <gasps> She's so pretty. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, this pops out and everything. Yep. So we've got a pop out there and we've got a pop up there. So that's mum and dad's bedroom. Oh, nice. And then uh, this sofa pulls out to a double bed. Whoa. As does this one. And then my bed with my ladder is just up there. Oh, she's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I am very, very lucky. Yeah. So yeah, then we've got our kitchen here and it's got underfloor heating because we didn't want radiators because yeah i'm quite prone to falling over yes. and so i didn't want to fall over and burn myself so we've oh. got all underfloor heating in oh. here and then this actually does pull out so it gives us an extra bit of workspace so just go like that oh cool and uh and we've got some drawers here and got a bit of extra workspace so uh oh. so yes yeah, so we live in her for weeks when yes. we're away at competitions definitely and make things. yourself at home in here <laughs> yes yeah so we had uh we had another daphne before and uh and we kind of ended up selling her and upgrading to this one so we we're very lucky to have the Whitaker's support and yeah we've got air conditioning for when we're away in Europe and it's really yes. hot and it can actually carry four horses although we've never filled yeah. it up with four horses it's normally just one or two but yeah. uh yeah we've got room for four horses and a bathroom and a shower so after having a little look around the beautiful Daphne I thought Natasha and I would have a little bit of a chat and learn more about her story in a month's time, we were both actually supposed to be in Tokyo, you with horses, me with a camera, but um, the world's a little bit different to how we were expecting it to be. So talk me a little bit more about what you've been getting up to during lockdown. Yeah, it's a really, really strange time, isn't it? Um, I have actually quite enjoyed the time to press the pause button yes. and chill out a little <laughs> bit. Um, it's been really nice spending a little bit more time with Lottie, not having like the other engagements yeah. going on. Um, and so I've been doing lots of pole work, um, lots of hacking, which has been so yeah. nice. Um, I've done a lot less in the school. I thought, you know, with Tokyo coming up, when we come out of lockdown, I'm going to be back into intense training. Mm -hmm. So I kind of gave her a little bit of a working holiday, yeah. if you like. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of ticked along. I obviously couldn't have my trainer here. Um, but yeah, we had a really, really lovely time just kind of building our relationship and our partnership. And uh, it gave me lots of time to do ad mini things yes. as well and all the boring stuff, <laughs> all the that, stuff you that you never get like, time. I've been putting behind being like, I need to get that done. But exactly. Now's the chance. Yeah. The flat has never looked so organised. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so now why don't we talk a little bit more about how you got into riding? Is that through, through um, family? Tell me a bit more. Yeah, it's all my mum's fault. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Blame my, her. Yeah, my mum was horsey. She was brought up on this yard. Um, so my great granddad bought the yard back in the 50s. Oh, wow. So I'm actually fourth generation Whoa. here. Um, and so my mum was brought up here, always been around horses and ponies. And, uh, and so it was kind of a natural thing for me as well. Um, I was brought up here too and so you know stepping outside the front door having horses around me from yeah. day one and um, it was a very natural thing but mum and dad didn't really want to be pushy parents yeah so I did everything else growing up I swam I went to brownies I played musical instruments really badly <laughs> um, but riding and horses was always there and yeah. I always wanted to have a riding lesson and because of my disability I had to have lots of uh, physiotherapy it was actually the physio that called my mum and said, please, please take Natasha for riding lessons. She's driving me mad. Oh. All she talks about during physio is riding horses. And so um, mum finally gave in and that's when we were introduced to the RDA. So uh, last summer, actually, I went to the RDA Nationals at Hartbury, did oh. some filming there, which was just incredible. I've also helped out with my local RDA group, and we did some filming of that as well. Amazing. So um, talk to me a little bit more about the RDA and how they've helped you with your riding. 
So I was introduced to the RDA when I was about eight years old and did the, the general like Saturday lessons. They actually didn't have a slot for me at the beginning yeah. um, because I was at South Bucks RDA, which was one mm -hmm. of the biggest RDAs in the country. Yeah. Um, and they were very well known for their sports connections, as in like riders progressing mm -hmm. from RDA into Paralympic riders. Um, and so I worked really hard on getting my slot. So my granddad used to call up every Saturday morning and say, has there been anybody, you know, calling in sick or yeah. any cancellations? And I just used to fill that spot. So I think they could see how dedicated we were to yeah. getting me on a horse. And, uh, and so eventually kind of got my regular slot on a Saturday. And then it was actually from watching the Paralympics in Sydney. Um, that's when I announced to my parents that I wanted to become a Paralympic champion at a very ambitious 10 years old. Oh. And, uh, and I can remember going in the following week and telling Clive, my instructor, oh Clive, I want to win a Paralympic gold medal one day. And they were so encouraging and, you know, nothing was ever unachievable. Yeah. Um, they always pushed me and, you know, were so encouraging and, and giving me so many great opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like it gave me such a great foundation starting at yes. the RDA because I taught, I was taught the basics, but also I was able to ride lots of different horses and ponies, which I think is so so helpful yes. <laughs> at a young age to, to be able to get on something and get it going well yeah. um and so yeah i just kind of got worked my way through the levels i guess i was talent spotted a year later when i was 11 and put onto the world class program and that's i guess when my career kind of started looking towards the mm. the paralympic games so Natasha, you have achieved a lot so far in your riding career. What would you say was your proudest moment? Uh, definitely London 2012, yes. <laughs> uh, without a doubt. You know, from that 10 year old child that dreamt of winning a Paralympic gold medal to 12 years later standing in the middle spot of the podium, having that gold medal put around yes. my neck. Um, without a doubt, that was the, the proudest moment of my entire life, um, especially because it was in London. That yeah, made it the extra home country. special, 100%. Like I had friends and family that had never seen me ride before come and watch me at the biggest competition of my life. Yeah. Um, that was so, so special. And JP was such a superstar. I was so proud of everything that he had given me. Mm -hmm. And he really had a heart of gold and, you know, to come home, with two Paralympic gold medals and two Paralympic records and personal bests. It was literally the best three weeks of my entire life. Oh, incredible. So um, now let's talk a little bit more about what are your plans for the future? Uh, so I've got a new horse that yeah. we got last year. Um, her name is Lottie. Her posh name is Keystone Dawn Chorus. Um, and she is She's actually very similar to JP. She looks like the female version of JP. Oh, wow. <laughs> so if she's half the horse that he was, yeah. that would be amazing. Um, but we had a really, really good start to our career together. Um, so in 2019, uh, we did lots of able-bodied competitions mm -hmm. because I didn't really want the instant pressure of going in and doing the para competitions. Yeah. Like, when I enter para competitions, it, it's expected that I'm going to win. Yeah. And so I wanted to kind of give her a bit of an easier time. So I started doing some able-bodied novice classes, um, kind of accidentally qualified for the regional championships, oh, wow. and then got a wild card to go to the national championships yeah. and ended up coming second, which wow. was just insane like my first ever national championships in able body classes like that was beyond my expectations right. and especially to get that result i yeah. just kind of went there for the picture yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then we started our para kind of career together mm. in the October of last year. Yeah. And I took her to her first international at Kiso and we ended up winning all three days <laughs> there with some really good percentages. So yeah, I mean, hopefully she'll be my Paralympic horse. Yeah. Um, hopefully, yes. you know, next year with Tokyo and you know, she's young enough. She's only nine this year. So yeah. she's young enough to do Paris in 2024 as well. Yeah, fingers so. crossed. <laughs> Okay, so lastly, while we're here, are we allowed to have a little look at your medals? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will have to send Mark home to get them because oh, I forgot no. them. <laughs> <laughs> it 
literally we literally is five minutes away, so I'm sure he won't mind going together. Aww. I can't believe that. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, guys, it's been a little bit later now. We now have the medals, so can we have a little look? Yes, of course. <laughs> so, so exciting. These are the medals from Rio. Oh, wow. And uh, what's really cool about these is they actually rattle. That's so cool. So it's for the blinds. So they can tell the difference between the gold, silver, and bronze. Wow. So the gold has the highest pitch rattle. Yep down to the other ones. But um, fortunately, I don't know what the, the silver and the bronze sound like. Oh. <laughs> um, but these are the boxes that they come in. I was only actually given two boxes for three medals. And then that's the, the back of them oh. and you get like a little pin in That's there so cool. as well. The boxes are so pretty. <laughs> yeah, the boxes are gorgeous. The London one. So my boxes are a tad used. <laughs> oh. they're, they're, they're well loved. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's the, the London medal. Wow. They are so heavy as oh well. You'll have to feel them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is definitely my favourite one. Aww. So I won three in Rio because I was part of the team yeah. and I did the individual and the freestyle as well, whereas mm -hmm. I wasn't part of the team in London. Yeah. Um, so I just had the opportunity to win um, two medals. And uh, yeah, they are pretty amazing. It still feels really, really surreal. Yeah. That these are mine. Like it, it's like, did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> did that happen? It's like a dream, and I'm just gonna wake up one day, yep. and someone's gonna say, no, no, it's all right, Natasha. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've also got your MBE down yes. there as well. For yeah. That. Unfortunately, Poppy got to my box oh, no. as a puppy, <laughs> and uh, and chewed the corner. Oh. <laughs> but she didn't get to what was inside, so that's good. So, this is. The MBE that I was awarded Whoa. after London 2012. That's so the cool. Queen actually gave me my MBE, which was Whoa. amazing. Um, very, very, very special day. Yes. And it's just one of those things that you never really like think about. Yeah. Like it was so such a surprise when I found out that I'd been awarded it. And yeah, amazing. I still, again, it, everything's very surreal, but I, I like, MBE, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very strange. And it's my colour. Yeah, pink. Pink. <laughs> I'm loving the matchy matchy everywhere with the pink. Oh, yes. Yes. Got to love everything. Pink. And the sparkles as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, Natasha, thank you so much for um, letting us see your medals. I was wondering if now we can go say a hi to Lottie and maybe see you ride her? Definitely. That would be great. Brilliant. Let's go. Let's head off. So, this is Lottie. Oh. Hey, good girl. Hello. She's currently having a massage. Oh. She loves having a, like a little warm up massage oh, before I ride that's her. So nice. <laughs> She's spoiled. Yes. Very, very spoiled. Yes. So I've had her for about a year now, just over a year. Yeah. Um, she's very, very special. Oh, um, she's gorgeous. I think so, but I'm biased. Yeah. <laughs> Um, she's so cuddly and lovely and she's just a really, really nice person to be around. Yeah. Um, she gives so much love. She's currently falling asleep. Oh, <laughs> I think she's enjoying the massage She then. definitely yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she, she's just amazing. And yeah, I like, I've done things on her that I never thought that I would be able to do. Like I can take her out hacking and go for a good canter around the fields, yeah. which... You know, I actually cried the first time oh. I could because I was so emotional that I hadn't been able to do that with so many of my previous yeah. horses because I, I didn't really have that kind of relationship. Yeah. Um, but she, I think I could take her into a war zone and she wouldn't blink oh. an eyelid. Like she's, I trust her implicitly. And yeah, it's just kind of a bit of a different relationship to those that I've yeah. had with my other horses, but, um, but very, very special. Yeah. I love her lots. Oh. <laughs> Hey, lots. You good girl. She's a big foodie as well, yes. like me. Oh, all of mine are. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta love their food, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, she loves her little sweeties as well, oh, don't you? Lots of treats. Yes. Spoiled. That's the thing. You know, they're competition horses and and that, but they're also pets to yeah. me. You know, they're not machines, and 
you know I love them all so so much and yeah. if I couldn't do what I'd do I still have them because I just I'd love, love them, love them. yeah <laughs> couldn't be without you could I Lottie oh. Okay, guys, um, we're now at the arena. So um, your mum is now lunging Lottie. Yeah. Um, I've kind of made myself at home a little bit here. You have this cool little shelter, so if it does rain, you know, I'm protected. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> I thought we would talk a little bit more about the equipment when you use when you ride, because um, you were telling me that you don't ride without stirrups. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so I took my stirrups away when I was about 11. Yeah. I, I actually had a really nasty accident where I got dragged. Oh, wow. um, a horse spooked. I fell, my foot got stuck oh, in the no. stirrup and I got dragged. And because I have no sensation in my legs from yeah. basically like here down, um, it's it's quite dangerous. Yeah. So if I do fall without stirrups, at least I fall clean. Yes. Um, and so it's a lot easier to not have them than it is to have them. But yeah. obviously it means that I have to work on my core yes. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not the easiest thing riding without stirrups, but yeah. having done it for 20 years now, I'm kind of used, used to it. To it. Yeah. yeah, no, oh my gosh, I should probably do some more no stirrup work because, yeah, your core muscles definitely work hard They do. Them. They really, really do. And it took a little bit of time and I used to get really frustrated as well when I was trying to look for new horses yeah. that I would go and I would find a horse that was really bouncy that yeah. I couldn't sit to. But somebody then said, well, if they're bouncy, then they're not through and swinging over their back. And yeah. that's why you can't sit to them. And so I wouldn't want a horse that's not swinging over yeah. its back. So actually the bouncy ones aren't right for me. Yeah. And I mean, she's she's pretty bouncy. She's got a really good hind leg, yeah. um, which, you know, can feel quite bouncy. So it's taken me a long time to kind of get used to her movement. But that's the same with everything. Yeah. Oh, she looks gorgeous from what I can see so, so far. I'm biased, but yeah, I, I think she she's is. She's really nice. <laughs> we fell in love with her, like, within two seconds yeah. of seeing her. <laughs> I was the exact same with Joey. Yeah, you, you just, just kind know. Of know. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know. It's just that instinctive feeling. I think she was the 14th horse that I tried when I was yeah. looking. And, uh, and it was during Storm Gareth last year. And I was riding in an indoor school and it was like the wind was howling outside, yeah. the wind, uh, the rain was pouring and everything was whistling around. There's loads yeah. of noises and she just didn't bat an eyelid. Yep. And I thought, yeah, you're mine. <laughs> I was the same with Joey. When I tried him out, it was hailing. It was the day after a storm. And I was like, he's only five and he's like amazing. Yeah. So. When you know, you know. Yeah, so true. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Be stretched before I start because my adductors uh, get really really tight which is yeah. basically what enables me to walk um, is the tension and the tightness and the tone in my legs mm -hmm. is what keeps me standing and walking um, but that's not great for when I'm riding yeah. so uh, mum has to do this stretch for me before I start so I feel kind of more into the saddle yeah. But of course, I haven't had physio either since the beginning of lockdown. Oh, so yeah. my body's in a bit of a mess at the moment. So I'm not riding at my like best, yeah. but I can't wait to see my physio again. Yeah. <laughs> Lottie can't wait either. She's yeah. had it more than I have because <laughs> physios can come and work outside. Yeah. She's had physio twice and yeah. I'm still waiting. Oh. Love that will never need to hide Love will always rise above Whatever comes, we will be just fine If I am yours and you are mine Take my hand and let's fly away To another galaxy Hold me close, I want to feel your love Together we are free just be 
with me Just be with me Just be with me Now we're one with the sun over our heads And at night we'll be the stars We can go any place that we want to I don't care if that's too far Take my hand and let's fly away To another galaxy Hold me close, I want to feel your love Together we are free Just be with me Just be with me Just be with me Natasha, um, it was so nice to watch you ride. She's so beautiful. Um, but anyway, you were doing a lot of um, using your voice as aids. Is that something you use a lot as well? Yeah, so when I'm riding, although you'll see my legs moving, yeah. I have no control over them at all. So they're doing their own thing, basically. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm useless from about here oh. down. Um, so I have to train all of my horses to my voice. So yeah. they have simple commands uh, like walk on, trot, the, yeah. the normal clicking. Yeah. Um, and then, for instance, for an extended trot or extended canter, mm -hmm. in the corner, I'll say ready yeah. and then go. <laughs> yeah. um, and they know exactly what I'm talking oh. about. So basically, my voice becomes my legs. Yeah. And then I do ride with a whip and spurs. And that's just kind of back up really yeah. if I need it um, mm. but I'm really lucky that you know normally she's very very responsive yeah. and uh, and she's a naturally forward-thinking horse yeah. so it's that fine line between spooky and sharp yeah. but also having that forwardness because I need something that's safe yes <laughs> oh she's so lovely she is oh. she's a good girl so I believe we're going to go for a little hack now. Yeah, I yes. can't wait. Let's That'll go. be really good. OK, everybody, I'm now here on Millie, who I've very kindly been allowed to take on a hack. She's also rocking the matchy matchy guys. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit more about Brooks My Hackathon because um, I'm going to be taking part this year. Um, so for my hackathon, it's to try and hack 100 miles in 100 days and try and raise at least 100 pounds. Um, so if you'd like to check out more information about my hackathon, I'll leave a link in the description below. And um, Natasha, I believe you're going to talk a little bit about um, Hack 5 with Brooke. Yeah, so in August, I'm going to be taking part in Hack 5. It's August bank holiday weekend where I'm going to be hacking five miles, donating five pounds and nominating five horsey loving friends to do the same. So I can't wait to take part. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. So much fun. I'm excited for our hack now as well. Yeah, me go? too. Let's head. Yes. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for having me, Natasha. It's been so much fun. Thank yeah. you for coming. Oh, Millie is so cool. She's so sweet, yeah, isn't she? So sweet. I knew you'd be a good match. Yes. And I wanted to get you on one that wasn't grey. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the amount of cleaning I've done with my boys just takes forever. I'm quite glad I've only got two white socks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Lossie looks like she'd be quite easy to clean. Yeah, she is. And she likes a bit of pampering yes. as well. Yep. Honestly, sometimes I think Casper rolls on purpose. All right, everybody, um, here we actually have some beautiful Brooke t-shirts that Natasha and myself have both signed. So if you would like to enter my giveaway to be in the chance of winning them, then be sure to head over to my Instagram page at this underscore Esme. Also, be sure to head over to Natasha's Instagram. What's your handle? It's at nbakerpararider. Brilliant. So if you'd like to find out more information, all that kind of stuff about Brooke and my hackathon as well, I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you so much again, Natasha, for having me. Thank I've had you. so much fun. It's been such a good day. It's thank been so you. good. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching today's video. Um, if you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe as it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.